Welcome into Cross My Heart Ministry. I'm Laura McFarland. Delighted, absolutely, that you've chosen to stop by today, spend a few minutes with us. Well, our regular subscribers know that we have a little tradition here at Cross My Heart called Write the Word. And so each month we publish a new bookmark. We typically choose a word for the month and then provide you a verse reference for every day of that month, encouraging you to read that verse, write that verse out in a journal, pray over it, meditate on it, and just let the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, take the Word of God and stir up your heart as a woman of God to intentionally choose to live that verse out for the glory of God. Well, this month, we're sort of doing something a little bit different. We did go through the book of Proverbs last month and found some great verses for us as women, and we're going back through Proverbs again, this time looking at some different verses, but all equipping and challenging and encouraging us to do some parenting by the book. Now, if your children are already, already raised, or if you're an aunt, or you don't have children, you've got children that live next door, somewhere there are children in your life, children in your church, children that are in your family, children in your neighborhood. I'm just convinced that there's someone, a child in your life somewhere that you can pray these verses over. And praying for the next generation is so empowering. You know, it's easy to complain about what we see happening in a culture, but when we read and pray God's Word, it just sort of feels like we're actually doing something about it. And so I want to look at one of these verses during the summer when we're not yet teaching through our regular school year study. I usually typically use the Friday devotional to unpack one of the verses on the Write the Word bookmark. And so if you're doing this with us, on August 2nd, you wrote out a passage that's actually several verses because I just couldn't pare it down, but I thought it was such an important passage, and I want to sort of unpack that with us today. I'm going to read the passage of these five verses, and then I'm going to unpack it a little bit. So if you'll just bear with me, I'm reading from the old NIV version, the 1984 version, beginning in Proverbs chapter 2, verse one to five. And this passage begins, my son. And so this is the writer of Proverbs speaking to this son that he cares about. So we can envision ourselves as a mother speaking to my son or my daughter. And he's speaking and imploring this son to trying to share some wisdom. So here, you can follow along with me. If you have a Bible, you can pause the video or you can just listen along. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, and if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Now, ladies, when I read that, I, I like to even picture God speaking to me, that God is saying, Laura, my daughter, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you. And so we, this is the word of the Lord. This is the word of God. And when we talk about storing up God's word within us, storing it up, that's really a call to hide God's word in our heart. And the, the most valuable reason that we do that is that if we memorize it, we commit it to memory, if it's hidden in our heart, Heart, then the Holy Spirit will retrieve that verse. He will bring it to the forefront of our minds in situations where we absolutely need it. It's powerful to have scripture memorized so that it's there and it can, it can come to mind sometimes unwittingly, sometimes unbeknownst to us, and sometimes we don't even want it because it's so convicting. I'm sure like me, you've heard stories of prisoners of war who had scripture memorized and having those scriptures that they could draw from, like a deep well that they could draw living water from, help sustain them through a, just a traumatic time in their lives. We need to maximize this time when our precious ones are little and still in the home. If you're a mother with little ones at home, in, enrolling them in a program like Awana or making sure they're in Sunday school where they're learning scripture verses or just doing that in your own home is so very powerful. As, as grandmothers, we can do that with our, with our grandchildren, but we can also just pray for the children in our lives that they would be under the word of God and committing the word of God to memory. So 
the writer of Proverbs has a call to hide the word in our heart. And then you just sense the urgency as he's telling us what to do with that. You store up the commands within you. He says, turning your ear to wisdom. There's some action words here. Turn your ear to wisdom. You know, when we turn our ears, it means we're putting ourselves in a place to hear and receive. We're leaning in. When we don't want to hear something, we turn away or we turn on something else. We're distracted. We turn up the radio or we put in our earphones when we don't want to hear that other noise or we just tune out. We may be forced to sit there and, and while someone is telling us something, but our minds can be far away. When we turn our ear to wisdom, we are putting ourselves in a place to hear it and to receive it. I, I, I think that when we sit ourselves in a pew on Sunday morning, we are putting ourselves in a place so that our ears are turned to receive that wisdom. When we put our ourselves in before the word of God every single day, abiding in his word. That's another way that we are turning our ears. We are leaning in to receive what the Lord has for us. And, and we can pray that our children are, are, are trained and equipped to see the benefits of turning their ears to that wisdom. And then he says, and applying your heart to understanding. You see, it's not just enough to turn your ear to it. We can, we can all know what the word of God says. But, it, but applying it, not just hearing it, but receiving it and putting it into action. We, we hear what it says and then we put it into practice. Is God's word being lived out in our lives because we hear it and receive it and know it and then we go live it out. And then he says, and if you call out for insight and you cry aloud for understanding, you know when you call out for something, when you cry out for something, you cry aloud, there's an urgency here. There, it's, an, it's an acknowledgement that you need something that you don't have. Well, if you've had little children that you've cared for and they fall down, when they call mommy or they call Grammy or, or whatever and they need something, they're hurt, maybe they're just hungry. But when there's a great need, you and I do the same thing to God Almighty. We get on our knees and we call out to Him. Calling out and crying out is acknowledgement an acknowledgement that, that we don't have it. We don't have what we need, but we know the one who does. He is all sufficient. We are insufficient. We are lacking, but God Almighty, in Him we can find everything that we need. We can call out to Him and we can cry aloud to Him. And when our children and our grandchildren see us doing that, we're modeling for them what to do in their time of crisis. We want our children to call out and to cry out for the Word of God. And then he says, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure. Well, you know, you, you search and you, you look for something that is valuable. And he says here, it's a hidden treasure. There are hidden treasures to be found in God's word. And as we read and study and recite and memorize and, and meditate on it, those hidden treasures are brought to light. And the Lord that takes it and, and teaches us, he's a kind and gentle teacher. His Holy Spirit illumines his word for us. You know, if you told a 12 year old, I've hidden a $100 bill somewhere in the living room and you can have it if you find it. Well, that 12 year old is gonna tear that living room apart looking for that $100 bill. If you take a five year old outside on Easter afternoon and you say there are 30 Easter eggs here and they all have a dollar in them, that five year old is going to rush with his or her little basket looking for every one of those Easter eggs. You know, think about the, the wonder and the excitement of a child when they're searching for a treasure, when you, you promise them a reward. Have we lost some of that youthful, childlike desire to, to, to really search for things? Do we just want to be spoon fed the Word of God? We just want to sort of get the cliff notes or have someone feed it to us or put the eggs in our basket. There is great value, great excitement that comes as we dig it out for ourselves, as we search for the truth here, and as we pray and model for our children and teach them to do all these things that this passage is challenging us to do, to turn their ear, to apply it, to call out for it, to cry aloud for it, and to search for it. It's a relentless pursuit, this lifelong, passionate searching and going after it and putting ourselves in a place every single day to hear and receive what God has for us in the treasure of his word. These are words shared 
from a parent who has lived his life and is and is on this side of it knowing the wisdom knowing the blessing that comes from the word of god and he's imploring his son to do these things Anyone who knows Jesus, anyone who follows the Lord will eventually figure this out just naturally through living. When we're young, we, we may think we're protected. We don't have any needs. We don't need to be in the word every single day. But the longer we live on this planet, the more needy and desperate and dependent we become. We become increasingly aware of what great sinners we are and what a great Savior we serve. God's grace becomes so much bigger to us because we begin to realize that He has forgiven us way much more than we imagined. I love what the, the Puritan writer said that I we are way more sinful than we ever wanted to admit but much more loved and cherished than we ever thought possible. That's what comes as we walk and abide with the Lord. That's the wisdom of the aged that you see as you walk with the Lord year after year after year. If we can impart this wisdom for our children, if they can somehow grasp it, then they can skip up that learning curve, that spiritual learning curve, and get there quicker to seize and grab hold of what they will eventually find out on their own as they start on that sanctification journey journey after they turn their lives over to Jesus Christ. Ladies, I'm going to pray this passage over my grandchildren today, and I, I hope that this might model for you or encourage or equip you to pray scripture over the, the ones that you love in your life. So here we go. Julia Grace and Charlotte and Ellie, I pray that you would accept the word of God and that you would store up his commands within you, that you would have that desire as a young woman to love God's word and to hide it in your heart. I pray, first of all, that that Charlotte and Ellie would come to know Jesus as their Savior early in life. And I praise you that Julia Grace knows you as her Lord and Savior. I pray that all three of these young women, Lord God Almighty, would turn their ear to wisdom, that they would have ears that want to hear your truth, that they would eagerly soak up the truth as they sit in Sunday school or as their parents teach them the Word of God, that they would not just be hearers of it, but they would want to apply their hearts, put their whole heart into understanding God's Word, your Word, God Almighty, that they would understand it and they would want to apply it to their lives. I pray that they would call out and cry aloud, not just only for their mom and dad when they have a need, but for the insight and the understanding, Lord God, that can only come from your Word and from your Scripture. I pray that they would love your word and having it hidden in their heart and crying out for it would equip them to live always and in all ways to make much of you. Father, I pray that they would become women of the word as they grow older, even as little girls, but then as bigger girls and teenage girls and young adult girls, that they would see the treasure of your word, that they would love the word of God, that they would look for the truth that is found here in your word, Lord God Almighty, that they would see and search for it as it is is silver, search for it as its hidden treasure, that they would see God's word, your word, God Almighty, as the greatest treasure they have, and they would find their knowledge and their peace, that they would find grace and hope and love that can only be found in you. Lord God Almighty, I pray that the Spirit of God would take the word of God and it would profoundly change the hearts of my granddaughters, of Julia Grace and Charlotte and Ellie, and as they grow up and become mothers and grandmothers grandmothers themselves, that your word would be the legacy that is passed on through the generations of our family. I pray this all in the sweet name of Jesus Christ, God, your son and my savior, all for your glory. Amen. Well, ladies, thank you for spending part of your day with us. And I pray that God's word would be living and active in your life, that you would have a desire to model to your children and grandchildren and to all the children in your life what it means to, to receive the word of God, to store it up, to turn your ear towards it, to apply it, to call out and cry aloud for the, the wisdom that you need here, and that you would continue day by day to search for it as a treasure, because that's what God's word is, an absolute treasure, more precious than silver or gold. For Cross My Heart Ministry, I'm Laura McFarlane.